for practical purposes this will serve to be the first lecture <coughs> because even if those who due to their pre occupied schedule could not attain can do the contents that are <coughs> this now will ensure that everybody understands and all the lectures so the criteria for not being defaulter now is revised from 75% to 100% because they can either see live or recorded version the subject which we are going to deal this time is signals and systems signals and systems happens to be a fundamental subject and apart from its wider applications in electronics engineering it is by and large an interdisciplinary subject because it deals with the working with the signals and the working is done by the systems the syllabus contains six modules of them first three modules are tackling the continuous points in the syllabi in the first go i will try to cover the points at a broader level without much deviation because it has been an observation that the <coughs> deviations take a longer course than the main course so we try to have a suitable modification of dealing with the subject matter also at an initial stage we will prefer monologue in the sense that if the questions are asked the very funny way with which the answers are presented by you act as an interrupt for the interrupt service routine and which never returns back to the main program therefore we will not allow any interrupt to occur so i will ask the question i will allow some time for you to think for the answer to yourself and then i will tell the answer and it will provide an opportunity for every individual to cross check whether they were otherwise coming to the same answer or not so with this approach i am sure that we would be able to comfortably deal with the subject in 60 hours even though the stipulated hours are 39 and obviously there are tutorial slots which we will deal suitably <coughs> so let us try to begin with the fundamentals of signal and system in today's first lecture <coughs> as i have stated at the beginning itself now the threshold count for lecture to happen is 1 right because if the videographer or student is available in that case we can go for the lecture get it recorded so that other can view it at a time <coughs> so we will not waste the crucial time which is say the question mark whether time is crucial or not for you people but it will save in the time so signal signal is considered to be mapping of one variable with other variable both these variables are presumed to be <coughs> single dimensional the other variable with which the variable main variable is to be mapped is usually time or sometimes position length but most of the times it is time only for example suppose if you are having some heat engine like experiment in that uh, the temperature at a particular point is the variable of interest then what will happen when the experiment is being conducted the temperature of that particular point will change so we can have a plot of temperature versus time right so signal is mapping of one variable with respect to other variable and uh, usually other variable is time so as regards to electrical engineering potential of a point in electric circuit and voltage of that point 
with respect to obviously a reference that is ground with respect to time so the most popular signal which we deal with in electrical engineering electronics engineering is v of t voltage at a particular point with respect to time vt is a signal which we will deal mostly with <coughs> and obviously it is one dimensional means voltage possesses a single value which is either positive or negative or zero if you think of temperature it doesn't have a negative value if you look at the absolute temperature it doesn't have a negative value but uh, let us not go into those minor details but just having a glance at minor details is required in the first go so as to give you a clue so that those who want to think deep can think deep those who don't want to think deep will not think deep those who don't want to think at all will not think at all so it will serve the purpose of all at once and then how does when so it is signal so the next question comes how it is to be represented how the signal is to be represented as it is for all the time if we presume that time starts from now and mark t equal to zero it will proceed throughout the end till t becomes infinite it will be a real time signal it will vary continuously there may be some requirements in which this all time processing is needed there may be some requirements in which we are interested in processing it for some time this one so how the signal is to be represented then the simple most represent is graphical representation which represent the signal in its entirety so we are having time on x axis and voltage at a time on y axis and this we can say a representation of the signal and if i want to restrict to 1 minute say t equal to 60 seconds t equal to 0 so the signal so voltage is one dimensional signal and its representation is as shown with this to time now in electronics engineering in image <coughs> processing we also come across another type of signal let us say black and white picture a black and white picture when a black and white picture is there what do we do what in voltage signal time is the reference time is the reference variable with respect to which we map the voltage variable similarly for a black and white picture i am very specific to black and white because if we go for color then a multi dimension issue comes which we will also address after some time so as of now for a black and white picture the variable of interest is intensity which may be a value zero is all black and then some maximum is all white zero is all black and some maximum let us say actually it may be infinite but let us not go into again those details some maximum is white and in that we are having various gray levels so intensity is the main variable but what is the reference variable it is now the position so it is a two dimensional reference variable and one dimensional variable of interest are you getting me one dimensional variable of interest and two dimensional reference variable then how it is represented a black and white photo itself is representation there is no other way by which you can represent you can represent with respect to a 3d plot wherein for white you can give maximum height for black you can have zero height and you can have the uh, frame and you can have the plot so that will be one other representation if you go for color then the variable of interest becomes a multi dimensional variable with uh, it is presumed that there are three fundamental colors r g and b and their relative intensity with respect to each other give us a particular shade and their overall what we can say sum provides us the intensity 
like that. <coughs> so this is the concept of signals. Now we would like to study the signals. Then just by making a mention that there can be two dimensional reference frame and an intensity signal covering that frame but we keep that aside and we better concentrate for quite some time major portion of this subject on the one dimensional signal that is there is one particular variable maybe voltage maybe current maybe temperature maybe pressure maybe humidity and also for most of the times the x axis is time signal with this we study one vari variation of a particular variable with respect to time so broadly or for un usually the definitions are made in a classical manner means those exactly describe the principle but is not understood so therefore we must have a working definition which is understood by us so let us say for time being that signal is nothing but variation of a particular variable with respect to time the variation may be zero in that case it will be constant signal right? so now this signal is to be studied can there be an alternate representation of the signal is a question now if the signal is a deterministic signal if the signal is deterministic signal in that case it is possible to write a formula for the signal for example a constant signal i can write vt equal to 2 and we restrict ourselves to time for the time being that signal is there only for one minute duration it can be all the time also but we try to be moderate at the center place of the playing field for most of the time and we will touch the boundaries as and when needed so vt equal to 2 is a signal so by a single value a constant signal a single value is able to describe the signal entirely since it is a continuous signal it has got to represent it it will require infinite values with infinite resolution why because at every point of time at every instant there has to be a value and it can take any value between Say minus infinity plus infinity ideally, but let us say minus v min to plus v max, minus v min or minus minus v one to plus v two. So it can take any value. So as it can take any value, the only way with which we can represent it is a graph. But if the signal is deterministic, then you can represent it like this. Two. Then you can represent some signals like sin t and so on. So deterministic signals may be represented by some formulae. You can have a polynomial signal like a a two t square plus a one t plus a z. But can be in reverse way. It can be a zero plus a one t t plus a two t square and like. So it will require these to represent the signal. You may need these many constants. So if the constants are finite, then the signal is deterministic. If the constants which are required to represent the signal are now again, this a0, a1, a2 are continuous variables. They can take any value. You can't represent it using digits. a0 can take any value. It's a continuous variable. So
so if you are able to describe the signal by using finite number of continuous variables then the signal is deterministic and if you are unable to describe means that for every point there is no way by which there is no other way except you have to specify its value itself so if you require infinite constant to describe the uh, entire signal then it is a non deterministic signal random signal Now, the scope of this subject is to study whether this is one way with which we can be present, but this is not a mathematical way. This you can't, this is not portable. This representation is not portable. The only way by, by which it can be made portable is to have this picture, give it to the other, give it to the other, and so on. Because if there is no shorter way of representing the signal, then there may be multiple ways. It is presumed that analog is infinite resolution, means you can have any value. But if you want to put it on a computer, then you have to discretize it. Discretize it on both domains. Discretize it on both domains. To be very much particular, means you can't. Describe this signal by an array of numbers. You can't describe, you can have only graph. You can only have a graph, but not a numeric representation. Are you getting me? For a continuous signal which can take any value, you cannot have a numeric representation. You will be having graph only. And that graph can be transported to other fellow by only exchange of the graph itself or its photograph. Again, when I say photograph, when I say photograph, can you further add to this photograph? Photograph on which camera? Infinite resolution camera. That is the conventional camera film in which it is presumed that film is continuous in nature. So, it captures it in the entirety, not the pixel camera. Okay. So, but this much extremity again we, we don't want. So, we can have, we can have strips. We can, what we can do is we can have an array of pixel and then we can define which pixels are required to represent this signal. So that is uh, in a way representing the entire signal. Then what the problem is that in this graphical represent graphical representation is complete representation. Graphical representation is complete representation and that to a graphical representation in continuous domain is complete representation, representation nothing remains to be described when we have a graphical representation when we have a graphical representation nothing remains to be described so it's full but as it is full suppose if there is no camera. There is no camera. You are shown this signal. No recording mechanism is available to as of now. And your absent friend asks you, what was the type of signal? Are you getting my question? I am trying my level best to simplify. Beyond this limit, there is no simplification possible. Are you getting me? A signal is a graph means graph is the ultimate representation of the signal and I, I am again for one minute duration so the, you come to the lecture you see the signal and tomorrow there will be a test and in which it's open question test open question test is students come for the lecture today they see the signal 
and the question for tomorrow's test is draw the same signal right now your absent friends have asked you what was the signal show what will you do how you will answer the question what was the signal show even though graph is the complete representation it lacks in a major phenomenon that it doesn't exhibit any features which can broadly describe the signal with less number of describers or descriptors so graphical representation is very much poor as regards to the exploitation of features is concerned therefore an attempt in analyzing the signal is to describe the signal with numerals then again pixel form is there so the immediate next level is discretization what is there this so let us presume discretization both domains means in time domain and in amplitude domain so what we can have this is 1 second 1 minute signal 60 seconds 60 seconds right so we presume 1 millisecond as the resolution so there will be 60000 slots and there would be some dynamic range and we say that in 32 bit floating point representation is much enough to describe it neatly so for each delta t i get how many points one four byte value so i get 60 240 bytes is the input is it clear means what i have uh, for first time slot what was the value so each time slot describes the single value closest value correct closest means if value is this if this is the value then quantization is there so this will be having 132 bit combination this will have one 32 bit combination so i will describe when i have this value particularly i will say this is this value so for a 1 millisecond sampling interval the average value again average means in that it cannot be constant it may vary it's average so averaging for 1 millisecond number 1 and its digital counterpart which is closest to that average so 2 lakh 40000 values will be described in the signal so it is a time domain signal in which i require 2 lakh 40 bits 32 bits so so 2 lakh 40 bytes 4 bytes for each sampling interval then you view the signal now ray and then if you have to tell to absent friend you need to tell 2 lakh 40 bytes so this is the crude definition of the signal means as it is means crude it means it is not processed so for 1 minute signal i require 2 lakh 40 byte 2 lakh 40000 bytes to represent but then it is complete accurate in the limitations of quantization now the question is is it possible to reduce these many values required to represent 
without compromising but uh, that will have a, another risk that uh, some crucial calls may be lost so you can divert them to some of the friend So this is now the brief introduction of signals. We will come to the details as the subject gets unfolded in lectures to come. Now the next question is of systems. Next question is of systems. You have studied some systems before without making mention that you are studying that system. <laughs> system is that which works on the signal and produces another signal. System works on one means we can have a concept of and a signal acting as an input to the system and a signal emerging out of the system as an output from the system. So there is a concept of input signal and an output signal and the system governs the relationship between the input signal and the output signal. The input signal and output signal may be same variable signals like in an amplifier or may be different variable signals like a moving coil voltmeter. With advanced technology readily available today, you might not have got the opportunity to see a moving coil voltmeter. But if you had an opportunity to see a moving coil voltmeter, in that case you must easily identify what is the input signal to the voltmeter? Voltage. Voltage. Voltage signal. And what is the output signal from a moving coil voltmeter? Deflection. Deflection or angle. So V in T is the input signal and theta O T is the output signal. And there will be some relationship. There will be some, it's a proportional relationship. It's a constant of proportionality. So theta O T is equal to k v in t is the relationship but we need not go to that we can have a simple relationship actually we it's a classical uh, example to discuss then can i have let us say the constant of proportionality is what we can say 0.1 radian per volt the constant of proportionality is 0.1 radian per volt so theta O T is equal to 0.1 V in T. Theta O T is equal to 0.1 V in T. Then can we have this relationship for a moving coil voltmeter? Can we have, can we design such a voltmeter which will have a relationship of Theta O is the output angle, then the output variable is angle and the input variable is voltage. Theta O T is equal to 0.1 V in T. Theta O T is equal to 0.1 V in T. Do you believe that it would be possible to design and construct such a volt moving coil voltmeter? which would be responding instantaneously and that is not possible because for a moving coil voltmeter looking at the way with which the coil deflects we can easily understand that such instantaneous response is impossible such instantaneous response is impossible so we cannot have this relationship what relationship we can have to that we shall come after some time but in general we can conclude and what is a system a system is that 
which works on input signal and produces the output signal. So each system has its own property, maybe gain in this case. If you apply same input to different systems, it will produce different outputs. If you apply different inputs to same system, still it will produce different outputs. So a system has got its own characteristic equation which is usually called as a transfer function. Sys transfer function is the characteristic of the system. We have an input signal. We have a transfer function of the system. Then based on the input signal and based on the transfer function of the system, we get an output signal. Then in this subject, we are going to study signals, we are going to study systems, and we are going to study what is going to happen if a signal which we have studied is having some features or parameters, a system which we have studied which is having some features or parameters, what will happen if a signal which we have studied is applied to a system which we have studied, then are we in a position to calculate what output signal it will generate. Even though at an initial stage it looks like to be very simple one, we are studying at this stage not means there is no requirement that whatever system which we suggest must exist in practice. It's a hypothetical study. Then there are some elements which enable us to implement what we had thought of that also we can do so we talk of a system and obviously when we talk of a system signal is inbuilt because if we apply no input to the system then it's of no use so system by default consists of a signal then let us take this uh, moving coil voltmeter is also an amplifier in some ex some sense wherein there is a concept of gain input variable is there output variable is there the gain will have units now gain will not be unitless gain will have units angle radians per volt will be the units of units per gain but let us uh, not waste time in that because you na have not seen the word such a voltmeter let us consider a simple amplifier. <clears throat> As stated last time itself, this subject being very much analytical in nature, it requires our constant attention. But for some unavoidable reason, if you find that your attention is shifted, in that case you try your level best to re-attain, try to retune and carry on with retuning without the worry of where you were detuned because you can see the lecture by replay so that otherwise when recording was not available a sincere fellow who has got detuned even though after he tries to retune after a couple of seconds he gets perturbed by number one why he got detuned and number two what he has lost in that detuned moments how they can be recaptured but with recording available so detuning is having two effects first of detuning and losing something and second is even after retuning a pain of that detuning but with uh, recording recorded version available now you can get rid of the second uh, demerit of uh, detuning. This is a remedy for the lapse and not a liberty to commit the lapse. Means if ever you get, you get detuned, there is a remedy. But merely because remedy is available, you should not get detuned. 
so we talk of a system then in that we shall discuss what the system is how the system is expected to behave and what will be the limit to which it can behave close to the expectation so let us talk of a simple amplifier Let us have a simple amplifier of gain phi. We have an input V in T and we have an output V O T. And we have an output V O T. So what is the expected equation which will govern the functioning of the system? So input signal, the system is amplifier and the output signal. So naturally, it goes without saying that it, be, it should have V O T is equal to phi into V I T. V O T is equal to phi U into V I T. But obviously, everybody of you must be in a position to conclude that it is impossible because again it will demand an instantaneously responding system even though the electronic components operate at a larger speed as compared to the moving coil voltmeter but naturally they cannot operate at infinite speed so instantaneous response from any system which is a real time system which is to be made up of physical components is impossible. Therefore, this is a non-realizable equation of the system. This is a non-realizable equation of a system, an amplifier of gain phi. The moment at which the expected equation is a non-realizable equation, then a subsequent question follows what would be that realizable equation such that it is as close as possible to the expected but impossible or non-realizable equation. This is expected and non-realizable. So what we want the closest realizable equation to this equation. So you can think for some time and come up with the answer. I think he is thinking uh, quite a bit and he must have come to the answer now. <clears throat> so what is the closest equation now to this? In concluding that the equation shown is non-realizable, <coughs> the constraint was inability of the system to, ins to respond instantaneously. So if that requirement is taken off, we can realize the system. So what would be the system which you would like to realize? At this question, I take a pause of two minutes and I would like to seek answers from you, one or two answers on which I can deliberate further. So the question is quite clear. Tell me the equation of a realizable system now and it should be very close to the expected one. So what is that equation? V of t plus delta t equal to 5 is 0 V in T. Right. As expected, what was the problem? Problem was inability to instantly respond. So he has said I will just modify. He has suggested very correctly, his approach also right, but we just it is just what we can say representation change that V O T 
is equal to obviously phi is the gain into v in t minus delta. Is it correct? So output at a particular time is phi times not the input right now but the input delta t before and delta t ideally should be zero for a good system it should be very small and for a poor system it is somewhat large so does it serve your purpose okay you got it that the equation of the system which would be a practical system is <coughs> V O T is equal to phi into V I T minus delta T, where delta T may be may vary from system to system. Delta T is a variable, but for a given system it is fixed, and may vary from system to system in the range of say few tens of nanoseconds to ten microsecond. It's a Again, representative range. Is, will it be all right? Yes or no? Yes. Sir, again, we'll need some infinite resolutions. Again, we'll need some infinite resolution. What you say is correct, but let us presume that. When I say phi u, I am not insistent on phi. Means uh, what he said is actually correct. It also leads us to a new principle of uncertainty. You cannot design a system for a given value, or you cannot find out the value of a given system. Are you getting me? So let us forget about the gain, which is a very complex system. Suppose if you are cutting the sticks and you are asked to cut the stick stick of a some given length, then you can't cut a stick of that length. Or if you are told to tell what is the length of the exact stick, you can't tell. Or no, I think uh, it's a repetition. Two specific things cannot be equal and vice versa. Any two given things means you cannot have. Suppose if the, the you have a matchbox, a matchbox factory, and in that matchbox factory. The wooden small sticks are cut, and ample number of sticks are available. Then you choose any two sticks; those will not be of equal length. Or you cannot identify stick of equal length. But matchbox is a discrete example. Let us take a simple example. The height from mean sea level. This point is having some height. This point is having some other height. Take any two given points; they will not be of same height. Does that mean that if I take one point, there is no other point of the same height? It is there, but you can't show that. This statement itself, the statement is only one line statement. Specific specific things are never equal and vice versa. Specific things are never equal, and vice versa means equal things are never specific. Means there exist. If you take this point, it is having some mean sea level height. There exist points which are of same height. 
but you can't locate them. Located things are not equal to each other or a thing which is equal to the first can be located. So from that point of view, a 5 we are not much specific on. We tolerate some error in 5. That is not right now important. So that is uh, taken care of. Other than that, do you see any limitation for this equation to be realized? Or do you see it to be very fine? Other than the constraint raised by him that uh, to get accurate 5 is impossible. We can't get that. Let us check for the opportunity further. The question is very simple. We have come to a conclusion that equation number one is non realizable. Equation number one is non-realizable, therefore we are working at equation number two and means equation number two is a realizable approximation of non-realizable equation number one. Do you agree? So, whether do you agree or otherwise is a wide open question now, which you can think for the entire day and we shall meet tomorrow in order to look at the question, recording off.